Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Laughing Matters. Please welcome your host, Mr. Hector Louise. All right. Woo. Keep it going for DJ Johnny C, everybody. Yeah, I got you guys going on Facebook Live. Yeah, you're on Facebook Live. Nice. How many people here are on Facebook? Nice, nice. A lot of people are, huh? Social media. There's a lot of crazy shit going on on social media. Some crazy stuff. First off, didn't you notice most social media is like, uh, like HR at work? You know what I'm talking about? HR and Facebook have the exact same job, letting everybody know when other people's birthday is. <laughs> right? Yeah. How many people wished you a happy birthday? Couple hundred, right? You know, none of those motherfuckers would have called you <laughs> at all to say happy birthday out for their memory. No one would have remembered that shit. Just like at work. Just like at work. No one's gonna remember. I mean, I don't even remember my kids' birthdays. It's a kind of messed up. Did anyone ever ask you, you got kids? Yeah. Yeah? Are they grown? Yeah. They're out the house? Gone. Yeah, that's why you have a smile on your face. Okay. <laughs> But that's why I smile too. But okay, if someone ran up to you quick and asked you your kids' ages, can you give that answer fast? Plus or minus a couple of years. Plus or minus a couple of years. <laughs> Good stuff, huh? That's it. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I'm lucky I remember I have kids. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for this? All righty. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. All right. Up first, we have a gentleman. He's been uh, in the comedy scene, wow, for a bunch of years, man. I've known this guy for a long time, too, which means we're both pretty freaking old. <laughs> Please welcome H.P. <laughs> How about a round of applause for Hector, huh? What a great job he's doing. <laughs> Lovely people here. Thank you for coming out, man. This weather's kind of cuckoo today, huh? It's freezing out there. This is the only type of weather you know you get away with? Frozen schnott. You know you know when you walk around, you're like, hey, how you doing? They're like, does that guy know he's got frozen schnott at the end of his nose, yeah? This is the only weather. It's freezing out there, but... Yeah, as uh, Hector mentioned, my name is HP, and I'll be doing stand-up for the next couple of minutes. Unless... Um, President Trump's ice team finds me up here. <laughs> then you'll get a comedian up here real quick because Laughing Matters cares about your entertainment. So, yeah, because that's, that's the way the world is spinning nowadays, right? I gotta be worried about that, pretty much, okay? Uh, yes, my name is HP, and you guys are making me feel so special up here, something I don't feel at home. Um, I'm gonna tell you what HP stands for, okay? Because you guys are so, you came out, why not, right? Might as well know what HP stands for. I was like, yeah, HP, all right. Uh, HP is just an abbreviation of the uh, cute little nickname my old man called me as a kid, which was, uh, hey, puto! <laughs> <laughs> me? Okay, that's, that's me, nice. so. Thought I'd tell you that right now. All right. Um, I, uh, just to get familiar with you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm horrible at remembering names. I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm terrible at remembering names. Uh, once it actually took me eight months just to remember, your name is, uh, your name is uh, Mom, right? That's right. How can I forget your name is Mom? You know, you're the woman that keeps reminding me you got married because of me. How can I forget, right? <laughs> Mom, yeah, she keeps telling me that, you know. Oh, man. But you know what? My mother, every time I tell that joke, she hates it. She's like, that's, that's not true. That's not funny. You know? And that's a hell of a thing to tell a comedian, right? That's not funny, you know? especially from your mom. Okay. It's like, I never forget your name. She always gets me back by saying, I always remember you, for me, will always be my little special tax deduction. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. You remembered my name. It's not even April. Thanks. 
Yeah. I love my mom. I really do love, I, I love her a lot because she's the one that gave me this face. It makes me look like a lot of things I'm not, right? I guarantee you, if somebody walks in right now and they see me up on stage, they're gonna look at each other and say, uh, did somebody call Uber? I think the driver's up on stage. <laughs> somebody call, yeah. Usually I'll get stopped on the street and say, uh, and usually it's a cop too. He'd be like, uh, yeah, I think we see, he's on 40 seconds, yeah. El Chapo, yes, we caught him. I think it's gonna be the bust of the century. Get everybody here. And they're like, me? I'm just a comedian. Nice, okay. You know, one time, one time somebody told me that this face makes me look like an, I own an olive garden in Mexico. Is that true? Are you, are you guys getting that impression too? Okay, with that laugh, I think the drunk was right. All right, so yeah. I mean, I, this, this face, one time I got out of Home Depot with my stuff, okay? So I'm walking out of Home Depot, and all of a sudden this pickup truck drives right in front of me, and the driver yells at me and points at me and says, hey you, get in the back of the cab, I got work for you. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was just buying some things here, but you know I have low discrimination? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty messed up thing, so. But I do forget, somebody told me the answer to me forgetting my name, the, uh, people's names, is every time I forget somebody's name, just call them sweetie, right? Okay, that's, that's for a normal person, that'd be great. But in my case, it would be like, hey, uh, oh my God, what's this guy's name? Oh, hold on. Hey, uh, sweetie, come over here and meet uh, sweetie. Sweetie, meet sweetie, sweetie, <laughs> sweetie. Everybody here is named sweetie, okay? That kind of clears things up, right, <laughs> sweetie. I don't know. Imagine me going to a gym. I meet a new friend. He's really hulk and he's angry and he's just ready to work out. And I go by the gym and I'm like, hey, sweetie, I got us here. Come on, let's go. You want to lift some weight, sweetie? No, I'd rather just get punched in the face. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's not going to work. He's like, yeah, see, he's, he's on my side. Um, another thing I like to do is I like to smile a lot, you know, and that kind of disarms people. You smile, but lately I've noticed that's, that's, that's the wrong thing for to do with people, because they get they get pissed off I'm smiling. They, one time I was smiling, and somebody went up to me and said, yo, HP, why are you always smiling all the time? Hey, what's wrong with you? And when I gave him my answer, I felt like he's, like, I, th I thought he heard me say, uh, I smile a lot because I just committed murder and he still haven't caught me. <laughs> and he just, he acted really weird when I told him why I smile a lot. I, I, I told him I like to smile a lot, because it keeps the devil away. And that's when he looked at me and says, yeah, right, man, you're fucking nuts, you're crazy. And as he's walking away, all I just did was say, you see, it's how it's really working, you see? <laughs> Bye, el diablo, that's right. As, uh, as they were mentioned previously, uh, oh, I'd just like to mention that, I love accents, don't you guys love accents? Don't you think that's funny, right? One time, it, it's awesome, especially for my mom. My mom, she, she, she was into an, a, an accent thing. One time, we were going out to dinner, and she stopped everybody. You know how mothers li like to announce things loudly, right? All of a sudden she's, so she's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, we can't go out because I got to brush my teats. <laughs> What'd you say, Ma? <laughs> my dentist told me I got to brush my teats every day. <laughs> uh, first of all, Ma, who is Dennis, and why is he telling you to brush your tits? <laughs> no, pendejo, I said teats, teats, oh, teeth, oh, okay, I got it, but ma, stop saying that, because you're putting me in therapy. <laughs> really, okay. You know, I, I'm gonna end it by this by saying, I'm so glad you enjoyed all those jokes, because you know how long it took me to translate all that into English. <laughs> That's a long time. All right, let's bring back up your host. Thank you very much. Remember to have a great time. For HP. Yeah, it tells you what he looks like. You know what I've been told I look like? I look like a like if you grab DNA from Fred Flintstone and Don Francisco. <laughs> yeah. That's your man? All right. The, the only Caucasian guy in the room, and he's a big Don Francisco fan. All right.
And Sabado Gigantigo, you called it. That's awesome. That is great. That's when you know he don't have no kind of cable channels. He just goes straight to Univision. And you like watching the news on there, right? Yeah, that's right. Clothing optional. I know, I know. It's great. All right, you guys ready for some more show? Up next, this guy, he's been on Comedy Time TV. Please welcome Mr. Pudge Fernandez. All right, New York, what's up? Happy to be here. Yeah, New York City. You know they say New York City is one of the greatest cities in the world, right? I say it is a great city, except when it comes to the rent. That's where I draw the line. The rent is so high in New York City, it forces people to live with each other, like me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, we want to get a divorce, but we can't afford it because the rent is so high. And every time we have an argument, it's always the same thing. It's like, I hate you. I hate you. You cheated on me. You cheated on me first. Get the hell out. The rent is due. Maybe we should work things out. <laughs> I'm originally from Queens, New York. Yeah, I don't usually get a lot of love when I say that. <laughs> it's always been hard to tell people I'm from Queens because we've always been told that we're not the coolest borough, like we don't have the, we're not the toughest borough. And I, I believe that and I think it's true because I realized like the one this one time when I went to Manhattan, that's when I knew. You guys have been to New York City nightclub? Right? In the middle of the night, the DJ grabs the microphone to do that borough check to see who's representing. Right? That's when I knew. Because in the middle of the night, he was like, Brooklyn, where are you at? And they're all like, what, what, what? <laughs> then he's like, Bronx, where are you at? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> then he's like, Queens, where are you at? Oh my God, that's us <laughs> over here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he's so nice. <laughs> that's when I knew. <laughs> I also found out we were voted the, the nicest borough out of all New York City. Because we're the only ones that say please and thank you while we're robbing you. That's, that's our street cred. One fun fact about Queens that I love sharing with people is we're the most diverse borough out of all New York City. Did you guys know that? The mo we were so diverse growing up, every race had their own personal cab service picking them up. <laughs> I swear to God, the Mexicans had their own cab service, the Indians had their own cab service, the blacks had the NYPD. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was getting a ride, just not all to the same place. <laughs> That's what I love about New York City. We can laugh at racism, because we all know racism hits everybody. Nobody's immune. Like, I remember the first time racism hit me. I was in a supermarket of all places. You guys ever been in a market, and you're waiting online to pay, and you start talking to the person in front of you, kind of to pass the time? So I'm online, I'm talking to this guy. We're going back and forth. Finally, he pays, and he's about to leave. But before he leaves, he turns to me. And he's like, hey, man, so where are you from? I'm like, yo, I'm from Queens, born and raised. He's like, wow, you really speak great English. <laughs> I didn't know there was a Queens in Mexico. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I was like, gracias, gracias. Gracias, pendejo, gracias. I get that a lot. A lot of people, when they first meet me, they always assume that I'm Latino. Actually, I'm only half Latino. My mother's from Colombia, and my father's missing. <laughs> <laughs> Originally from Queens, New York, English was my first language. I didn't speak Spanish. But when you come from a Latino family, you always have those Latino cousins that do speak Spanish fluently. And they used to love teasing me because they knew that I didn't understand the language. Like every time I went over their house, they used to be like, yo, Pudge, what do you want for dinner tonight? You want chicken or pollo? <laughs> <laughs> See, you're laughing, because I didn't know. I didn't know. I was like, yo, give me chicken. Because I think I'm allergic to polio. I didn't get the shot. I didn't get the shot. I had a rough childhood growing up in Queens. I came up in a broken home. My parents got divorced when I was a baby. 
they were typical divorced parents. They used to have this, this thing where they always, you know, they used to love telling me how much they loved me, but they used to love telling each other how much they hated each other, and sometimes they did it all at the same time. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Like every Friday night, before my mom used to send me to my dad, she used to pull me aside. She was like, Pudge, Papi, come here. Come here. Tell your daddy that hijo de gran puta desgraciado piece of shit <laughs> that mommy needs the child support check, okay? Papi, you tell him. And don't forget, I love you. I love you, Papi. I carried you, Papi. I carried you. <laughs> And then I'd spend the weekend with my dad, right? And come Sunday night, he would send me back to my mom with a retort <laughs> of his own. Then he'd pull me aside, he'd be like, Pudge, Papi, come here, come here, meet up. Tell your mommy, that puta sucia whore slut, <laughs> that when I get the money, she gets the money, okay? Papi, you tell her, you tell her I said that, Mira, don't forget, I love you. I love you more. Mira, before you came out of her, you swam out of me, Papi. You swam out of me. Don't forget. Guys, I'm Punch Fernandez. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Punch Fernandez. All right, we're going to keep the fun right on going. Up next, we have a comedian. She has been featured on the Baltimore Comedy Festival as well as the Chicago Funny Woman Festival. Please welcome Ms. D. Watson. <laughs> got slapped in the face when I got off the train. It wasn't very nice, it wasn't very welcoming at all. You all on Facebook? Yeah? yeah? This came across my wall the other day. My boyfriend asked me to wax and bleach my butthole. <laughs> Let that sit with you for a minute, let's marinate that. <laughs> Not only was there a headline, y'all, there was a video to go along with it. Imagine this heifer up on the table with her behind, up in the air. The waxer's back there doing her job. What are we waxing our buttholes for? Can somebody please tell me? Speak up, Caucasians, because this is y'all. This is not us. In her defense, this was a little brown girl. I don't know if she was Hispanic, Dominican, whatever. But my question for her would be, what are you bleaching your butthole for? Do you want it to glow in the dark? Is that what you want? <laughs> so I have three older children. They always call telling me I'm acting like an old lady. So I thought I would go try it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Went down to the place, the little Korean lady behind the desk. I wish you could have seen Ming Lee's face when I told her why I was there. She said, uh, turn around, turn around. Oh, no, oh, no. You got to make an appointment. You can't just drop by here like that. <laughs> we got to order extra wax for that. <laughs> All right, Ningli, whatever. <laughs> so, do we have big girls in the house? Can I hear from the big girls? Hey. hey, big girls. I am certified and qualified to give y'all advice, and I'm going to do it today. First of all, big girls, under no circumstances, should you be wearing fragrances that smell like food? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't be dabbing O.D. Vanilla behind your ears. You're gonna walk by a crowd, they can be like, what is that smell? Oh, big girl got cookies in her pockets. <laughs> Don't let them do it to you, girl. Also, big girls, under no circumstances, should you let your size two, three, four friends just drop by, talk about, oh, girl, come on, let's go. Hurry up, put on your sweatsuit, let's go. They look cute in their little sweatsuit. Yes, they do. You big girl, however, you just gonna look like you're warming up for the buffet. Don't let them do it to you. <laughs> Last but not least, big girls, do not allow, do not trust any heifer that you can see light between her thighs. <laughs> she's hungry and she's mad and she means you no good. <laughs> we ready? Are we glad the holidays are over? I'm glad the holidays are over. I hate going to the mall and trying to park. Crowded, I hate it. So when the holidays are over, you, get to, you can park pretty good. So how come 
when I park my car right here, there ain't no cars over there, ain't no cars over there. Here comes Jackass, parks right there on the driver's side of my car. When I come out the mall, now I got to scale between these two cars, my big ass, get in my own car. Same jackass shows up at the doctor's office. Whole room full of empty seats, except for me, right here. He gonna sit right there. I don't know what he got. He don't know what I got. Now our germs is all mingled up together. I'm pretty sure that's how The Walking Dead got started. <laughs> Just like that. So I told you I have three children, 21, 18, and 28, the loves of my life. However, these are three of the blackest white children, excuse me, <laughs> I'm gonna rewind that, y'all. Those are three of the whitest black children you've ever seen <laughs> in your life. They really hate this joke, but I'm sorry, it's true. So my husband is a DJ, and he plays the funk all the time, and when he hears his children in the kitchen washing dishes, Singing show tunes, he weeps. <laughs> Loud weeping. My oldest daughter waited until she was 17 years old to go out on her first date. Husband and I really appreciated it. Boy comes to the house, pick her up, they get ready to go. He got right up close to this boy's face. All the color drained from his face. <laughs> of course, there wasn't much color there to begin with y'all, but that's a whole nother story. So after they left, I said, sweetheart, what did you say to that boy? He said, I told him not to stick anything in her that he didn't want me to stick in him. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the show. My name is Dee Watson. Thank you so much. He's a bad man, a Just as bad as she can be. everybody. Oh, man. I told you I got a good bunch of comics for you guys. I don't lie. At least not about that. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to keep the fun right on going, because that's how we do here at Laughing Matters TV. You guys ready for your next comic? Yeah. All right, so am I. So am I. Up next... This guy, he comes all the way from Jersey. He's got his own podcast by the same name called the Jerry Torres Program. Guess who? Jerry Torres! Oh my God. Thank you so much. Give it up for yourselves for being here tonight. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is Jerry Torres. Yes, I do have my own podcast show called the Jerry Torres Program on wildfireradio.com. And I studied really hard to get my communications. You know, I got A's and B's in all that. I have a certificate of completion in communications. Give it up for me, man. That's good. A's and B's and all that. Though they need to change the title, certificate of completion. You know, people call it a COC now. Because I, I don't like that. They should got to give it another name. Like one time I was having dinner with my friends, right? We we're having steak dinner, all guys, right? So we were asking, uh, we were talking about what we achieved, what we studied real hard to get. So I went to my one friend, said, like, what'd you get? You know, he goes, I got a PhD. My other friend was like, I got a bachelor's. You know, another guy was like, I, well, I got an associate's. You know, then they asked me, Jerry, what you got? COC? Oh my God, Jerry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is that worse than AIDS? You know what I mean? You need to change your diet, man. That's what you need to do. You know, you need to have unprotected sex, man. That's serious, man. It's like, my other friend thought it was carpal tunnel of the cock. That's what he thought it was. <laughs> no, man, certificate of completion, man. Oh, is that like a GED? No! <laughs> Looking back, man, I studied really hard, man. A's and B's, that was a great achievement for me because when I look back when I was a kid, oh my God, I hated school when I was a kid. I really did. But when I went to school, I received most of my information from watching television. Yeah. Like, there was a time in grade school where the teacher asked the question, what was the name of the three-man spacecraft that landed on the moon? And the answer is what? Apollo, right? Okay, I said Galactica. <laughs> or the Death Star, one of those two, you know what I mean? But I can't, I, I stayed in school and I read education. I found out a lot of things. Like I found out that a gynecologist is not a Russian cosmonaut. <laughs> An ophthalmologist does not have a super outlook on life. 
And Francis Scott Key did not write Glory Days, you know? So I found out a lot staying in school. And Darth Vader was not a part of Black History Month, you know? I found out a lot. I found out a lot going to school, man, you know? But I tell you what, people, man, it's like my niece, I have a niece that's 12 years old, right? She comes up to me, goes, Jerry, I said, you studied really hard, that inspired me to study real hard. 12 years old, this is what she said. I want to be a veterinarian. Ain't that sweet? She loves animals. She goes, I want to save animals. Ain't that beautiful? You know? And then she said, I'm going to get a pet, too. I was like, oh, baby, what you going to get? She goes, a kitten, a puppy. And she whips out her phone. She goes, no. She's going to get a baby piglet. Get a baby piglet. It's fit in the palm of your hand. And I looked at her, and I said, oh, baby, you know good and damn well blacks and Latinos cannot have chickens and pigs as pets. <laughs> they ain't going to last long, baby. You see, you see a pet. I see a pulled pork sandwich, you know? <laughs> Deep fried intestines, you know what I mean? Chuleta is going to you know? She doesn't speak to me now, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, people, man. I don't know. Like I said, I studied really hard, man. And I look back how it was. At 45 years old, I look back. Think about it. Anybody here by a round of applause who has kids? <laughs> Damn. Y'all happy you got kids, man. Some people on this side are like, yeah, I got kids, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think we're here? <laughs> Looking back, man, it's like technology is very much advanced, you know, because now with kids in school, they email or they text a report card out to you, right? Which is impossible now for a kid to hide or change the grade, yeah. right? Because looking back, man, when I was a kid, man, I remember like, oh my God, if all the report cards back in those days came out on a sheet of paper, an index card, either they were written in pen or typewritten, right? I became like a master forager. I did. This is what happened. One time I received a report card that was all Fs, right? So I busted out the typewriter and made that report card into a word review. Yeah, so like say if I got a, an F, right? I would write fantastic on the side. <laughs> And then the other F, fabulous. And the other F, flawless. And I showed that report card to my dad, and he started to cry. I'm not kidding. He was giving me a hug with his big knuckle gorilla arms he had, grabbing me by my face, kissing me. He's like, oh my god, son, I, I am so proud of you. He said, that's all I've been trying to tell you. If you put your mind into it, you study really hard, these are the results you can get. He even showed the report card to the whole neighborhood. He's like, look, everybody. My son is not a stupid dumb fucker who keeps saying he is. He passed all his classes. Look what the teacher wrote here. <laughs> Math, fantastic. Science, flawless. Spelling, <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell him that the teacher wrote phenomenal wrong. You know what I mean? That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jerry Perez. God bless y'all, baby. Despacito, quiero respirar tu cuello despacito. Deja que te diga cosas al oído. Para que te perdes si no estás conmigo. Keep it going for Jerry Torres. Jerry, here you go, man. Oh. I don't trust any folded up pieces of paper and shit. I don't know what might be inside. I'm just saying. You guys ever hang out at dance clubs? You know, you look like you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Up next, we have a comedian who's been on America's Got Talent. They're gonna be in Caroline's on April 5th. Take it easy. <laughs> Please welcome Miss Peaches Rodriguez. Hey, how you doing? What's up? All right, you're looking at me, Rodriguez. That's right, I am Latina and I'm blonde. <laughs> the day after he got elected, I dyed this shit blonde. <laughs> Ice is not getting my ass. That's what's up. <laughs> That's good. So it's time to take your Christmas lights down, everybody. <laughs> With the exception of my father, 14 years, 14 years, I'm like, Dad, take them down. You're embarrassing us to the neighbors. Come on, Dad, we gotta have a huge electric bill. He goes, no. Do you see that wire? That goes to the Johnson's house. 
I'm a cougar, any other cougars? Where are my cougars at? Yes! Be proud to be a cougar, or the original word for cougar is dirty old bitch. All right. <laughs> I look at rappers, rappers inspire me. They take negative stuff, flip it, make it positive. Rappers are like, I've been to jail, what? I've been shot, what? Well, I'm a cougar, I got muffin tops, what? Stretch marks, what? Hot flashes, what? There you go, you got it, that's all right. So I just had a mammogram, give me a hand. Clap like this. I had no idea. I thought it was going to be easy. In and out, flip a switch. No. No. Psychological torture. You want to know why? The two plates. They stick the tetas in. Plexiglass. You got to watch those things go flat. <laughs> silly putty. It's like silly, but they keep spreading and spreading. Right? I saw my... I had to look... Binoculars on the other end, that's how far they were. <laughs> My breast felt like two chicken patties in a George Foreman grill. <laughs> she goes out of the room, she just leaves me there. She said it and forget it. <laughs> she goes out to lunch, tuna fish sandwich. I'm sitting there developing a, like I'm screaming. I'm like, let my titties out. <laughs> develop a Scottish accent, like I'm Braveheart. I do not like this experience. <laughs> she lets them out, you wanna know what happened? They won't go back to their original show. <laughs> <laughs> National Geographic did us. <laughs> I'm a positive person, I say, come on, I'm just gonna play him like click class. <laughs> I found some stairs, I played them like slinkies. They had a race, one of them won. It was the right one, cause it's longer. You guys don't care, you don't care. So I date a, I date a, a, a white guy, I'm Latina, I date a white guy, he's always bragging about his ancestry. My ancestors crossed the Atlantic, landed at Plymouth. And I said, my ancestors crossed the border in a 67 Plymouth, so what? <laughs> That's right. People ask me always the differences between Latinas and I tell them the differences between Puerto Rican, Mexican, Dominican, it's the shape of our asses. <laughs> Puerto Rican women, the best asses on the planet. J-Lo, right? Well, I'm Mexican, this is the flat ass. <laughs> this ass is so flat, J J Jamaican guys stop me on the street and ask me, excuse me, ma'am, roll over so I can roll my joint on your ass. <laughs> it's a very flat. <laughs> Asian women are jealous of my ass. Mexican women earned this ass. We earned it. 2,000 years of pushing those Aztec pyramid stones backwards. <laughs> we'll get you a flat ass. <laughs> I like you guys. So I go to Vegas. Anybody else go to Vegas? Vegas? Yes. I stayed at that Wynn Hotel in February. I paid full price. I had no idea how expensive that place is Exp everywhere you go. They've got the bathroom attendants, you know that? You feel guilty, you gotta tip those people. Right, you feel guilt. That week I had diarrhea, cost me $1,700. <laughs> I lost more money taking a crap than playing crap, so it's not. <laughs> Prostitution is legal there, did you guys know that? Oh, look, he knows. <laughs> That is amazing, it's legal, but you know what? Those ladies, they gotta pay their taxes. Once a year, what's that day like at H&R Block? <laughs> She's sitting there with her account. Okay, like how do I itemize candy panties under food or under clothing? You guys, that's my time. My name is Peaches Rodriguez. Oh yeah. Rodriguez. 
All right. We're going to keep on going. We're just going to keep on going with the fun. You guys want some more fun? Yeah. You know, I always get that answer. I never say, you guys want to have more fun? So just say, no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, she, she actually originated the Divorce Divas of Comedy. Please welcome Miss Mindy Manajesevic. <laughs> to be here. I'm so happy you're here in this freezing night. Because you know, you're a very important part of this. With, you know, without you, it's just a bunch of comics hanging around. And it's never really as sexy as it sounds, you know. Oh, man. I know a lot of you are from here, from Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, over here. But whenever people come from somewhere else, I always hope so much that they don't judge all of us by, you know, our litterers and our public urinators and subway masturbators, you know, <laughs> a crotch grab. Oh, no, he moved to D.C. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Uh, um, so I'm gratefully divorced for anyone here who doesn't know me. I'm really grateful. I was married to a very difficult man, and he wasn't just difficult to live with, he was difficult to get rid of. His way or no way, right? So, um, so I had to get really creative. And keep in mind, uh, we had a child. So that kind of ruled out murder. <laughs> and I don't want to totally badmouth him. Because, you know, every now and then there was a sign of some sort of a conscience. I mean, like, he needed Viagra in order to cheat on me. <laughs> that says something. <laughs> I figured just like his first wife and me, the second wife, eventually his dick just didn't want to have anything to do with him anymore, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, look, the odds were against us. It was a mixed marriage. I mean, he was male. <laughs> <laughs> Problems. <laughs> And um, so I'm single again, and I'm older now. I mean, I'm not old. In between naps, I feel very young. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, but you know, it's different. It's different now. I'm not looking, you know. I'm noticing, but I'm, I'm not that impressed. <laughs> I mean, like if I don't do this a whole lot, <laughs> a lot of men just assume I'm a lesbian. And really, if that's all it takes, sign me up, you know? <laughs> I mean, I always thought it took a lot more than that to wear that badge, but hey, you know? <laughs> and then I get into conversations now with men that I probably wouldn't have before, and I get a lot of this. You're complicated. <laughs> yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm a human being. Yes, I'm complicated. So I have to remind myself, don't get defensive. Just refer him to the Amoeba dating website. <laughs> he could find his dream girl. We can all be happy, you know? And then, um, you know, being back out there and hearing all things, I, I heard someone refer to me as a chick. That just sounds so weird to my ears. I mean, a chick, it's not even a mammal. And, um, <laughs> and then my, uh, my younger male cousin pointed out that I was no spring chicken. So I thought, all right, great. I finally am a, a, a real live woman, no longer poultry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and as exciting as that is, there's often someone wanting to argue with me. I mean, one man was so irrational. He, say he, he brought it to his level. He got really mad because I didn't want to talk to him. He brought it to his level. He said that I had no balls. <laughs> now, I know in the male world those are fighting words, but in the female world, come on. I mean, that's just redundant. I don't need balls. <laughs> I have everything I need. It, it's turned out just fine. You know? I like the whole arrangement. I like the way my jeans fit. And you know, there's no room in here for balls. 
Some men are so hard to please. They want vagina and balls. How would that even look? You know, um, it might surprise you to know when I'm not up here doing this, I teach adults who haven't, hadn't been able to finish high school. So, um, and they're adults, and I'm me. I'm the me you see here. Of course, I don't say pussy in the classroom, but we're very close and comfortable with each other. They wouldn't be shocked to know I have one, right? <laughs> so, um, so, so they tell me things, and they tell me things ab about them and their marriages and their other teachers. So apparently, one of their other teachers got really angry at a group for being late and being absent. And um, she checked their records and found out they were attending my class on a different day. And she said, you go to Mindy's class? What does she do in her room? And they were speechless, and they would tell me, and I would be, that's what she said? What does she do in her room? She said, yeah, every day. So she's always asking us, what does she do in her room? And I thought, man, like they shouldn't have to go through that just for showing up to my class. So I, I thought, do I go over to this person? What do I say? I mean, relax. Other than the free cocaine and lap dances, there's nothing that special <laughs> I do in my room. I mean, of course, Fridays are very well attended, but Fridays are touch a teacher's titty day. What do you expect? <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Mindy Malagasovic. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I don't know. Such a teacher's titty day. It sounds like something might catch on. <laughs> no boy would be absent that day. <laughs> you guys ready for some more comedy? <laughs> See, I didn't lie. I told you I had some good comics. I didn't, I didn't lie. Not about that. Not about that. Up next. Wow, what can I tell you about her? She has a radio show called Funny Bits Radio. She's also been on The View uh, with the Hilarious Housewives. Please welcome Latisse. All right. Hey. Hollywood. All right. I like that. How y'all doing? You good? Woo! So happy to be here. I am married, I'm sure you could tell by the despair in my eyes. Can you, can you tell that I'm dying inside? <laughs> Slowly, <laughs> every day. Now, I love my husband, I love to say that right up front. Love my husband, I love my husband, because I like to say that out on shows because I don't say that shit at home. <laughs> yeah. Love my husband. Plus, you know, when you say a mantra enough, you put it out in the universe, it makes it, <laughs> makes it real, right? Love my husband, love my husband, comes back to you, right? Love my husband, all right. <laughs> but he's a complicated person, as we all are. And some complicated people just can't figure stuff out sometimes, you know? Uh, like, he um, is very horrible at compliments. So much so that he gives backhanded compliments. Do you, do you know this person? <laughs> Where it starts out real good, then they slap you in the face? Yeah, okay, so my husband and I celebrated our 12 year anniversary in November. Oh, thank you. I know you're just clapping because you realize he's actually still alive. You're, yes, he is still with us for now, for now. And uh, so we go, we say, let's go out to dinner. We're gonna go out to dinner, celebrate. A little swanky place, so I get dressed up. I come down the stairs, he says, babe, that outfit looks really good on you. Really hugs your curves. I said, thank you. He should have stopped there. <laughs> he then proceeded to say, really rounds you out. Huh? <laughs> rounds me out. All right, men, listen up. No woman wants to be called a circle, okay? <laughs> it's not sexy. Can you imagine? Babe, go put that lingerie on I got for you. I want to check out your circumference. <laughs> it's not sexy. <laughs> I was like, that's all right, I don't need your compliments. Get back at you. I'm just start working at the strip club, yeah. Start working on that pole, make that money, right? It backfired on me though. I started having this nightmare where every guy in the strip club was that old man from the State Farm commercial with the fishing pole. <laughs> oh, you almost had it. 
<laughs> Gotta be quicker next time. <laughs> yeah, I woke up in cold sweats like, I can't get the dollar. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He is. But I do. I said I love my husband. I love my husband. I said that, right? Did I say that? I love my husband. I love my husband. But uh, he's also one of those know-it-alls. Do y'all know that know-it-all? That knows everything about everything, no matter what the topic? I see a lot of people looking at each other. Yeah, you know that know-it-all? Because if, if you don't know that know-it-all, you are the know-it-all. Yeah, and we don't like you. <laughs> Your friends haven't told you yet, but I'm here to tell you they don't like you, right? My husband's a know-it-all, and on top of that, he's a doctor, so you know that makes it 10 times worse, right? Any doctors in the house? No, good, because we're gonna talk about them. They'd be, they'd be real assholes. <laughs> now, I love Grey's Anatomy. You guys familiar with Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. Phenomenal show, right? But see, I can't enjoy that show because he likes to call BS while everything is happening and he ruins the show for me. Now, if you've never seen Grey's Anatomy, let me catch you up real quick. They're doing liver transplants, right? Removing tumors from the brain. They're saving lives, right? Having sex in the on-call room, right? <laughs> Real shit is happening. And my husband's sitting there calling BS like, no, that's not the right tools they should be using. No, that's not the right verbiage they should be saying. I'm like, dude, you're a chiropractor. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to take care of this L5 and shut the hell up. Okay, 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 okay. Oh man, but I do, I love my husband, I love my husband. But I will tell you, sometimes I don't even have a show to do. That's just what I tell him, we get the hell up out of the house. I'm like, babe, I got a show in New York, <laughs> I'll be back. Then I go to Starbucks, update my status. <laughs> Killing it at Laughing Matters. <laughs> Hashtag comedy grind. He's the first one on Facebook to like that shit, too. Like, look at my baby, look at my boo. He believes me, y'all, he believes me. I do, but I am a, I'm a Jersey girl, and I uh, came up here. I love traveling and doing stand-up. And I live down in the suburbs of Jersey. Grew up in uh, white suburbia, if you, if you must. And um, it's cool, I love it. I love white people. Did I say that already? I do, I love white people. <laughs> guys are the tops with me. <laughs> And, but it's still very interesting that people are surprised to see me. <laughs> you live here, been your neighbor for 15 years. I... <laughs> Even people that know me, they're like, so Latisse, like, oh my God. Um, so like, how did you hear about our town? I'm like, it's cool, it's cool. You know, my husband's white, right? Which is how I got in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cause you know, they have that one black per household rule there. Plus the referral letter really helped. So he was <laughs> killing it, killing it. And let me just tell you, my husband, I said, is white. He's Icelandic and Czechoslovakian. I know, I found the whitest white man on the face of the earth. <laughs> and a lot of people tease me. They're like, I'll tease you a sellout because you married a white dude. And I'm like, no, listen, none of his ancestors owned any of mine. <laughs> Which is why we're happily married. <laughs> Ironically, I feel that happily married is an oxymoron. Right? Yeah, some may agree, it's cool. Some may not, you know, it's all right. Could be for one of two reasons. Either you're very happy in your marriage or relationship, congratulations, or you're not quite sure what an oxymoron is. That's, that's what it has to be. My name's Latisse, thank you guys so hey, much. Hey, hey. All right, so how's everybody doing? We feel like we've been on an adventure together. We've learned a little bit about ourselves and each other, yes? Nice, nice, but it's not done yet. Oh, no, 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 I saved the best for last. Our next comic, he hails from Russia, and you've seen him on Orange is the New Black. Ah, you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> oh, God, All right, we just shared a moment. I don't even know why. But, <laughs> <laughs> but please welcome Mr. Gregory K. I came from Russia. F 
from a very small town called Shit of Cow, <laughs> <laughs> which is right next to Moss Cow. <laughs> he really live in New Jersey, Nurk, very con convenient place, and not too far from New York, only one day walk. <laughs> mm. It's hard to make it in America, you know, especially for foreigner. My first job here in this country was in the stock market. I mean, in the stock room of supermarket. <laughs> Today I have, today I have career in education. I'm a high school custodial engineer. <laughs> good job, but not as good as supermarket. There is nothing to steal. My wife wants me to, did I tell you I'm married? No. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> My wife wants me to become more American. Yeah. She says to me, Gregory, it's time already to wear American clothes. So I bought the shirt, <laughs> very nice. And from this very popular designer, what's his name? Oh yeah, Clearance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married, but I'm married, but I I'm not wearing a wedding ring. You see, no ring. Because my wife doesn't let me. <laughs> She's afraid I'm going to lose it. I ask her, honey, do you trust me not to wear a wedding ring when I go out without you? She said, sure, as long as you're wearing the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> English is hard to learn. Does anybody speak English? <laughs> <laughs> Only me? <laughs> it's okay. I was told that it helps to read newspaper every day. Yeah. So for the last five years, I've been reading New York Times every day. The same one I bought five years ago. <laughs> So do you understand me okay? <laughs> Thanks. Because my wife complains I talk too fast. <laughs> I, I like English language a lot because it's a very emotional language. It hit me right here. I remember when I first time in America, I was called a motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> by a little boy. <laughs> At the time, I didn't know what motherfucker meant. <laughs> but since I already was taking English classes, I had the feeling that motherfucker <laughs> is a compound noun. <laughs> Word mother I knew before, because everyone knows. <laughs> For fucker, I reach the dictionary, and it says it's a person who has a sex with a woman. 
Then they put those two words together, mother, fucker. I got a person who has a sex with a mother. Who is he? A father. <laughs> Dad, pop. That little boy call me Papa. <laughs> My name is Gregory from Shit of Cow. Is what? <laughs> Keep it going for Gregory K. Keep it going for all the comedians you see tonight. More importantly, keep it going for yourselves for supporting live stand-up comedy. And keep it going for you fine folks at home for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys. And uh, remember, we do read all the emails that you send us, and we're notifying the authorities. <laughs> My name is Hector Luis. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, how you feel, and remember, you feel good? laughing matters. So much up. Love each other while you have each other. Have a good night. <laughs>